deeper look into implied volatility and expected moves. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. I mean, yeah, especially since Vol's not that great right now. I think we're going to learn some bad news that expected moves are not not so big anymore. You know, yeah, I mean, but they do a good job breaking down the edification of it. Let's see. That's what I would think, too, with the with a lower implied volatility, expected moves are usually lower, right? I mean, that's just... Right, which, you know, people see when they're selling those zero DTEs, they're not getting as far. You're not getting as far with your shorts if the if the ball's lower, expected move is less. But let's see what, let's see what Jaws has got to say about this. See what Jaws has got to say. Okay, IV rank, IVR, is the gauge we use to tell us whether an underlying has enough premium in its options to justify trading it. Traders also use IVR to gauge the anticipated movement of the underlying asset. Higher volatility indicates a greater likelihood of significant price swings in either direction. So today, let's expand on this, the usefulness of IVR by looking at how well it estimates the stock's daily move. Okay. How well it estimates it. So it's like, what's the IVR and how how often does the stock stay in that in that range? That's I mean, I th you know I think that the options gods are good odds makers. Yeah. <laughs> I say that all the time. I go, they're better than me. So if they think it's going to stay within this range, it usually does. So number right. two. All right. The, here's the study. And they're using SPY, Q's, IWM, Diamonds, USO, Gold, Silver, Amazon, Goldman Sachs, Google, IBM. They're using so many. So this is covering a wide range. Are you surprised? Okay. So you've got your big four, right? SPY, Triple Q's, IWM, Diamonds. And then USO, Gold, Silver. Got it. Amazon, Goldman Sachs, Google, Google and IBM. That's an interesting... Yeah, they've got IB IBM is back, Liz. It's back. We talked about it today. IBM is back. It's uh, they're using it in the study. You know what they don't have on here is your big, uh, big, 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 big Facebook yeah. meta, like your circles or your core weaves or your oclos, the ones that the volatilities are completely out of control. Well, because they haven't been around since, like those are all new. This is 2013 to present. You're correct. They don't have them for a year, <laughs> right? So they had to find uh, uh, stocks that have been around for long enough to to back test. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Recorded IV rank. You can keep going. <laughs> Recorded daily percentage price move. <laughs> Observe what happens to the daily range when IVR is less than 20, between 20 and 50, and greater than 50. So they're taking these ranges of IVR, not the volatility, but the IVR. Okay. So hold on for that one for one second. So less than 20, I think we're going to see a lot of the time. Between 20 and 50 is a lot. So between IVR of 20 and 50 is a lot. Greater than 50, it's pretty rare. I mean, I think, yeah, like between 20 and 50, that's, you're going to have between 20 and 50 quite a bit. I, I don't know what the percent of the year is, but let's say I'm going to guess a third of the year we're between 20, between 20 and 50 and two thirds of the year we're less than 20. And, and, and maybe 1% of the time we're greater than 50. Yeah. Or ten, five, three percent of the time, three percent, three uh, above fifty, right? Yeah, I yeah, agree. yeah. We're rarely above fifty IVR. So this is good, and this observed how the actual moves are greater or equal to the implied moves. Okay, yeah. all right. I switched from my coffee to my water. It's about that time. When do you, when do you go to wine? <laughs> I have, no, I have. Um, I, I, three hours is a long time. So I've got coffee, two waters. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure what the hell this morning would go. I know. I know. I hear you. Okay. <laughs> let's go to, let's go to number three. Looking only at SPY, we see that a 10 point increase in IVR will increase the daily percent move by 0.25%. So not that much. No, a 10 point increase, a 10 point increase in IVR. So if you're going from 20 to 30 in IVR, that's a big IVR move. A 10-point increase in IVR, yeah. That like if, if IVR goes from 20 to 30 and my daily move only goes up by 0.25%, that doesn't, that doesn't seem like that much. No, it doesn't, right? So that, and when hearing that, it's like, okay, if, if the rule of thumb is don't sell premium unless IVR is over 25, well, hey, you know what? If it's 22, I'm still going to sell it. Or yeah. like it's not changing the price that much. No, you're right. So between 22... Oh. Is, that, is that SPX? Jajun. I might call it Jajun. Okay, I'll push that up. <laughs> um, but yes. So sorry Sorry for the... Sorry, pardon the interruption. Um, okay, let's go I to was number waiting. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for the sound. I was hoping you still had your sound on. I have my sound on. I'm pushing it through right now, and then you can do the other side, and then we'll go back in. I'll go back into the... Uh, I, all right. It, okay, so uh, when the IVR in the index in the indexes is less than 20 the typical moves are less than 1%. So 
when IVR is less than 20, typical moves are less than 1%. So, you know, it's accurate. It's accurate. It's predicting a low move and typical moves are less than 1%. And so the, when the IVR goes north of 50, which is very rare, the typical move triples in all indexes. Okay, good. That's exactly what we should see. Yeah. Yeah. So less than 20, meaning like look at the first line and then the last line. It's like, you know, half percent triples, but 7% triples. So that's that's usually what we sh- what we what we should see. It should triple if it's over 50. The move should be a lot more. Right. Uh, it, so that's greater than 50, between 20 and 50. And again, most of the time, 97% of the time is what my guess would be, we're, we're in those first two categories. Okay. So my question to you, Jenny, is before we go forward, and I did not look at this. So when you're looking at these, now we're going to go into individual products. I'm going to guess that when the individual products IVR is higher, the moves are greater. The moves are greater, greater than... Um, than, the, than the indices. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I'm saying when the IVR in an individual product goes up, I think it's, if it's greater than 50, I think it's going to be a greater move than what would be in the indexes, right? Because the indexes are a basket. And I think you're going to get, you're going to get a bigger, a bigger pop in vol, right? And I still go back to that study I saw where it said, you know, when IVR is low, trade the indices, uh, trade the general market ETFs. When IVR is high, trade individual products because you're getting paid more. You're getting paid more premium. Yes. Okay, let's go. Move to the next slide. Based on the results of the regression, we have some key numbers to know. So when IVR is zero, the typical move in SPY is 0.3%. Oh, okay. When IVR is 100, the typical move in SPY is 2.4%. When IVR is 30, the tasty threshold of when we sell premium, the typical move in SPY is 0.8%. Okay, those are those are good facts to have, right? Yeah. Baby shark. Okay, and then go to number six of 10. Now maybe we're getting into the other products. I think we might be getting into the other products. <laughs> and I'm going to guess, you know, Q's, IWM, they're similar to SPY, but we'll see some differences with the individual names. Yeah, so let's go to six of 10. Moment of silence. <laughs> there we go. All right, the theoretical percent of time that the actual moves are less than the implied moves is 68. The theoretical percent of time the actual moves are less than the implied moves is 68%. So, and that's what we like to see. More often than not, the moves are less than the implied moves. So the 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 statement here is volatility is overstated instead of understated, correct? Yeah. So they overstate the volatility, so the move is slightly underneath what the implied volatility is stating it is. Um, so, and then look, it goes for equities. However, it was much higher. This suggests that markets are less volatile than anticipated by options prices. Okay. Where did you see that? It's the next sentence. Suggests that markets are less volatile than. <laughs> <laughs> so, equity indices, spy cues, diamonds. But it says for equities, however, it was much higher. This suggests that markets are less volatile than anticipated by options prices. So once again, options prices, even in equities, are overstated versus understated. You know, here's what I want my takeaway to finally be from one of these studies. We've been doing this show for 15 years, and sometimes they write indexes, and sometimes they write indices. So here we have equity indices, but on the last slide, it was indexes with an X. Like, somebody clarified me when you use indices versus when you use indexes. And that is not me that can clarify it. That's just somebody 15 smarter. 15 years. 15 years. That is somebody smarter who did not. I mean, I'm a math girl. I'm a math girl. Jenny, I am not a language girl. Okay. Let's yeah, go to- Two in here. Yeah, she, she should chime in on this. Okay, let's go to number seven. Uh, the commodity ETFs that we like to trade saw similar expected move overstatement, but not to the extent of the equity indices. Okay, so they had they were pretty much on par then. So if you're looking at your US oil, your gold, your silver, their expected move was 68%, but their actuals were wrapped around their gold. Wow. But gold. look, silver, silver, crude oil, they're actually the actual moves was a little bit more than the expected. Yeah, and gold is kind of on par with what the expected move is. And honestly, in the commodities, we're rare. We're rarely in these commodities. We rarely sell just iron condors. I feel like we're more directional. When we have, uh, like in crude oil, we're short just puts. Uh, um, in 
silver and gold, we just have the pairs trade. But we will rarely sell both sides and take a completely neutral stance. And and we like to be directional so we could get off with one get out with one quick move. So I mean I can and I see why, because the actual moves are slightly greater than the expected. Well, the other thing too with this, I think that is odd is these three, both of these three things in general, because of the way that they are, the implied volatility can go up even if the product is going up. Right. Right. So your IVR can rise. Like I said, with this one, the pendulum swings much farther on both sides with this. It's not your typical. You go to SPY, if the market's all-time highs, you'll see your IVR down. And that's that's pretty that's pretty standard, but Wait, not so, with these. This, so this has think, both like, sides. With silver and gold, when they rise, their vol goes up. So you would think the actual move would be less than the expected, but it's still greater. It's still greater. It's still greater. I, th- you know what this? You know what this? T- my takeaway to this slide is: when it goes, when it starts to move, get out of its way. That's yeah, what I think. Right, right. Get out of, get out of its way. <laughs> <laughs> That's my takeaway. There should be a disclaimer on the bottom. When these products start to move, get out of their way. Uh, okay. The next, the next uh, slide, please, John. Um, individual stocks also showed similar overstatements and expected moves. All markets had overstatements in their 45-day expected moves. Ne- moves. Next, we'll test the overall market in various IV environments over a 15 year. And, and you kind of talked about that. These individual products having bigger moves. So, you know, when the expected move was 68%, the actual moves were all greater. They were all greater. Yeah, they're all greater here. Uh-huh. That's kind of what we, ex- that is what we expected to see. Well, I mean, that's what you guessed to see. I mean, that's not what we would like to see. We'd like to see the actual move less than the expected because so. But indiv- individual projects do move. Like we we do know that. They just have a tendency to move. Where a basket of a products, which is your indices, if you're feeling pretentious, I got that from the chat. Um, the indices, <laughs> the indices um, are a basket, right? So even if Amazon moves, there's probably IBM in the same basket. And and so this co- this. I feel like as far as selling premium, and if you're looking at these thinking, oh, should I stick with the indices? Should I go to the individual products? But the individual products move is actually greater than the expected move. To me, it's follow the mechanics of of vol when like VIX is low overall, have a lot less risk on because that means markets at highs. And then when we have a drop, when we have a drop, vol expands, the IVR increases. And then that's when after a drop, when you and I will just sell puts or just sell straight lizards, we're never selling those strangles on a a drop. We're usually just selling one side and having risk to one side. And it, you know, I do want to say there is something to be said about having kind of that market awareness, Jenny. It's like you and I've been doing this for so long. We've been doing the show for 15 years, but we've been trading since we were 21 years old, right? So it's something we've done our entire lives. So there is some type of kind of a little bit of market awareness there, right? And yeah. I, I and I and that, that that is the one thing, but I do like having these guidelines for people that are just walking in. They should understand that. Right, right. Um, okay, slide nine. Okay, here we go. SPY, a deeper look into implied volatility and expected moves. So you're looking at SPY over the last 15 years. You've got the average realized move, an average expected move, breaks to the upside, breaks to the downside, and um, and then on this other side, what the overall IVR is. So I am kind of shocked that in IVR between 20 and 40, there's 12% breaks to the upside and 10% breaks to the downside. That I was shocked by. Because Vol's already Vol's already a little in flyer. So that means it's it's bouncing back up. Well, you would think when IVR is over 75, that's when markets falling, 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 falling. And you would think we've seen like breaks to the upside. But usually by the time we're having the the breaks to the upside, vol's already coming back in. So vol then like let's say we have IVR of over 75, markets falling. By the time we're rising and bouncing back, then IVR is back into the back into the lower ranges that 20 to you know, 20 to 40, 40 to 75. Yeah. Yeah, this is the spy of fifteen years. This is a good chart because the IVR doesn't stay high for long. You get down move, down move, down move, down move. IVR over seventy five, maybe that lasts a week or less. Who sings that song? It won't be like this for long. It's a country song. I don't know. <laughs> Where's Mikey when I need him? Okay, uh, then let's go to ten at ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. I give this market measure ten out of ten. I give market measure 10 out of 10 too. Our takeaways, when IVR is high, we use it to trigger, uh, we use it as a trigger to sell premium. And we can also use it to eliminate how much of a move we will see today. Yeah. Estimate, estimate, not eliminate, estimate, sorry. 
once again, uh, not compared in- to an IVR is less. And you know, is I'm, I don't. We don't need to go back to the last slide. But what I don't want people to be scared by is when IVR is over seventy five. That's when you saw like the bigger move to the downside. But when IVR is over seventy five, if we're selling puts, we're getting pretty far away. It's not like we're. And I think that's a warning of when IVR is high and the market's falling. I don't need to go right at the money. You can go pretty far and still get decent premium. Yeah. Okay, compared to when IVR is less than 20, all the indexes will see a three times or four times jump in the daily move when IVR is greater than 50. The expected move based on implied volatility tend to overestimate actual market moves, especially for indexes and individual stocks. The discrepancy between expected and realized moves is part of what provides option sellers with a statistical edge. If you're not subscribed, subscribe right here. And if you want to meet me and the team in person at our next live event, hit the link at the top of the description.